Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy and welcome to this CSS tutorial on styling links. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the basics of styling links, a couple of rules that not many people know of and not many te people take into consideration. Uh, so a bit of advice on that end. Um, and we're going to sort of be, be putting this into practice. So we're going to be creating some links on our page, styling them up, giving them, them a few properties, making them look nice. Um, and you'll get to know how to style links, um, you know, and all that business. So. Um, We've left off from the last part of the tutorial. If you haven't watched that, um, we've got a container which we're going to be using to place it more or less everything inside in this series. And we've got our style sheet which is called primary.css. So all you need to know is we've got our document, we've got our container, and we've got a link to our style sheet which you can easily copy this code if you haven't got it down. So inside of our container, what are we going to do? Well, we're working inside of our container, but we're not going to be referencing hash container like this. Container A, we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be using um, A as normal. So we don't really need to worry about this. In fact, I'm going to get rid of it. That would make a lot more sense. OK, so um, let's go ahead and first of all, create the markup for our links. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to type A, href equals now my tech link text goes in here, so link text there, uh, and I'm going to set a link to Google, so google.co.uk. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up my page and I'm going to refresh it. Uh, that was from the last tutorial. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my, in fact, now we'll keep the element inspector open. Um, now, you'll notice that it is purple. Now, by default, it should be blue. So let's go ahead and just change it to, to something else. Um, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have visited google.com. No, I have. So let's choose something that I might not have visited. CA maybe. And refresh. Okay, so our text is blue. Now that's already given a demonstration as to you know what's happening there. Google.ca I have not vi visited, therefore the text is blue by default and my browser is rendering that text blue. Pages that I have visited, for example, google.co.uk and google.com, are you know in a purple color because my browser is saying, "Well, you visited them, and uh, I'm going to render it purple." Now we can override this behavior. Don't worry. We can, you know, it, it certainly looks. It, it tends to look a bit ugly. It depends on what kind of effect you're going. Uh, in terms of accessibility and and making you know your page look good. Uh, it's recommended that you do actually use visited link colors. So you might, you know, underline it if it's visited, uh, which looks a bit ugly, but you might give it a subtle color change. But the difference between blue and purple by default, you know, tends to look a bit old and tired and outdated. So let's go ahead and make some changes. So google.ca I've not visited. In my primary.css file, we're going to start to uh, style up these links now. So obviously we need to select the element that we want to style and that is A. However, we're going to be using something called pseudo classes um, or pseudo classes depending on how correct you want to be um, to actually address what these are. Now A tags can be anything and A tag could be A name equals you know like something here like uh, top and you might use a link uh, to you know go to the top of a page or something you know a, a tags can be used for that too so what we want to do is we want to specifically style an a tag that is a link i.e. it contains an href and that and this here our colon and link is actually a pseudo class okay so um, what do we want what styles do we want to apply to our link well let's go ahead and first of all change the default color so I'm going to set the color to 000, zero, zero. Okay, so any link on the page we've set to 000. zero, zero. Let's go to our browser and refresh, and you see that the text color is changed to black. So let's go ahead and uh, change this. So let's say text decoration none. Okay, so our options for text decoration are none, underlined, and there's probably another one, but I never use it. So text decoration none, that essentially means that, um, you know, we're getting rid of the underline. So let's go over to our browser and refresh. And you see that the underlines disappeared. So we've got 
you know, a relatively nice looking link here. Um, maybe we should have kept the underline so it differentiate, differentiates from other content. Uh, for example, we could have this is a link. So let's go ahead and get rid of text decoration none. And we see that um, that's sort of become part of that sentence. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and click this link. And we're through to uh, the Canadian Google page. We'll go back again and you'll see that our purple color to our link um, has come back again. So, um, oh, didn't mean to click on that. Um, so our purple um, colors come back to our link. So we need to change this. Now, the, the um, rules for doing this will come a bit later when we look at hover and active however we might want to uh, set the um, visited to the same color now we could go a visited again we're using a pseudo class which is visited and we could say color there now that would work okay there's nothing really wrong with that technically wrong with that it would still work our link although we visited it has remained black However, we're using the we sort of using two di two of the same color in two different lines unnecessarily. So we want to make use of grouping these. So to group, we use a comma. So I'm um, creating a comma in here or typing a comma in here, and I'm going to say a visited. So this essentially reads a link. So an a um, element with a link and an a element that's been visited color them both black okay so this here refresh remains the same now you might be thinking you know why do I need to bother grouping elements you know what's the point well what you're doing is you're writing correct CSS what you're also doing is you are ensuring that you're keeping file size down you might not think you need a lot of stars per page but trust me Starsheet pages get thousands and thousands of lines long and they can be dramatically reduced by grouping different elements that share the same properties and that's the whole point of classes which you know we're going to be looking at in a lot more detail later on so when we have a class we give you know as many elements the same property but we don't have to repeat any code it's almost like function based programming I guess okay so there's two more pseudo classes for um, links we need to look at which are hover and active they're the more exciting ones so we've looked at the two boring ones if you're bored already we can go ahead and look at a hover and active now hover is probably the most exciting so we'll look at that um, we'll look at that first now if I wanted to um, keep the color black when I ho uh, actually no we'll, we'll change the color when we hover so I'm going to say A, and you probably guessed the pseudo class hover. I want to change the color, so I'm going to change the color to green. Okay. Now, um, there's nothing really wrong with this. Let's just go ahead and uh, have a look in our browser. Now, the link's black. When I hover, you can see it changes to green, so exciting. And we can also add a variety of other styles to this hover pseudo class to make it big or bold or not underlined or you know the letter spacing massive or, or whatever it can be absolutely anything um, you can have as much fun as you want with this making your you know your site look good by uh, using your hover pseudo class however we've actually done something technically wrong we've put the hover after our link and visited okay um, oh sorry no we haven't done something technically wrong. I've done it the completely wrong way around let's just go ahead and do this okay so this is still gonna work let's just go ahead and refresh our page still works oh no it doesn't okay right so let's put it back after you'll see that if we have it before link and visited it won't work so you might be tempted to just go oh well I don't want any style changes I just want a uh, hover to be black a link to be black visited to be black um, you know this is gonna work but it's technically wrong so you'd put it after here okay so sorry about that little blip but make sure you have it after so a hover and we want the color to be green and noting I'm not using a hex uh, based color I'm using a text based color which is fine um, there's a lot more of these in CSS3 so you can uh, go ahead and google a list of them okay so hover what else do I want to do well at the moment you can see that when I hover it goes green that's pretty cool um, I also might want to make it bold so let's go font weight bold uh, let's go letter spacing uh, let's say 1 EM uh, ignore this if you don't already know what it means I'm not gonna go 
too much into detail uh, on this video. Let's go refresh and you see, look at that. It goes all weird and funny. So we've created, you know, some cool styles. Let's change that to 0 0.2 and uh, go and refresh. And um, we can make this bold if we wanted, you know, well, we've done that. We can, we can, you know, do anything with this. We can take the uh, uh, decoration off, text decoration none. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, because you can see that the underline is removed. So I could play around with this all day. Uh, I'm not going to because we're going to waste uh, time and you're going to be bored. So I'm going to stick with my hover color green um, and I'm going to show you the last studio element which is less exciting but still quite useful in some respect and that is active. Okay, so uh, what are the rules for active? Well the active must come after hover. Okay, so we can't have an active here okay so we couldn't have active something and you might even be wondering what active is well i'm going to color this blue okay so um a active here would not work we need to place it after um hover so i'm going to go ahead and so i'm undoing things that i shouldn't be so there we go um let's go ahead and place that after the hover we'll go ahead and take a look at what this does so let's go ahead and refresh and then you'll see why so hover over green, nothing really else is happening, no sign of blue. Now when I click, but when I click and hold my mouse and don't let it forward me to a Google page, you can see it turns blue temporarily. When I release, it turns green quickly again and then releases back. So it's almost like a, a sort of flicker as, as you're clicking a link. And it can actually make all the difference to um, a page and how it feels. You know, you might want it to go bold quickly before you click it, or you know, you might want uh, it to even underline as you click it. You know, it, it's completely up to you. I'm not going to go into the possibilities. Um, and obviously, the reason it comes after hover is because it's really in order. We've got a link and a visited, which you know, one doesn't need to be before the other. Um, and then we've got hover, which has to be after link and visited, which makes sense because when you hover over, you know, you're choosing the 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 utmost state, the, the cascaded state, uh, after all we're using cascading style sheets. And then active is after you've you know hovered, it's after the original state of the link, it's overriding the visited state, and it's as you're clicking it and as you're going through to the page uh, that it's taking you through. So that's essentially it for basic um, link styling in CSS. We've looked at the four pseudo elements. We've looked at how we implement it on the page uh, and how we style these across our page. So bear in mind that these will style across everything. So whatever, if you put it in a container, if you put it inside a paragraph, anywhere, uh, these will still remain active. And then down here, uh, after these, you can apply individual styles. So you might want links to look slightly different inside or in certain parts of your pages, particularly menu items. You wouldn't want the menu menu links looking the same as your content links, for example. Uh, so you would go down and after here, you would override them styles, obviously cascading through this sheet and picking up different properties. So that's basic link styling in CSS.